All right, well, welcome everyone. We have a very exciting presentation, I think, for you today. I'm Diane McKeever. I am the education chair for the Minnesota SCORE chapter here in Florida, in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, we're a combination of Manatee and Sarasota counties. Before we get started and hear this wonderful presentation from our presenter, Joe Apfelbaum, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about SCORE. If you don't know about it, it's a nationwide nonprofit organization that offers free confidential business mentoring, free for life, really. We work with you until you are successful or until you give up, whichever happens first. Our particular chapter has nearly 90 volunteers who are waiting to help you. So if you're interested in getting some free help with your business, please contact uh, us uh, or score.org and sign up there. We're very proud to say that our chapter was recently recognized as a chapter of the year. We help you in all stages of your business, whether you're just thinking about a business or you're in the startup phase or you really have a business and you recognize that it needs to grow a little bit more. Or finally, perhaps you're interested in buying or selling a business. We have a team of people that are standing by waiting to help you with that. Uh, I encourage you to visit our website at minnesota.score.org. There you can request a mentor, find other workshops. We have weekly webinars. This is one of uh, our weekly webinars that we're very proud to offer. We try and get uh, outstanding talent like Joe to offer their insight into different uh, aspects of business. So check out our upcoming webinars and sign up for as many as you want. They're all free. You can locate recorded podcasts or templates. If you're looking for uh, a template in Excel, there's a good chance that it will be there or other types of templates. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank our community partners and sponsors. They keep the lights on for us. So it's very important that we support them. And thank you for their, their uh, uh, support of our organization. Very often, if you go into any of these banks and you come in with a SCORE mentor, they'll listen to you a lot more than they will if you walk in by yourself. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn this over now to Joe. So Joe, take it away. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Wow. So first of all, thank you so much. Round of applause. Uh, to Diane for arranging this. I really appreciate you. I'm excited about presenting today. I'm gonna to be sharing my screen now. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. We have a really nice crowd of people here today and I see people are putting their LinkedIn URLs in the chat. Uh, I'm excited to see all the different people. I'm gonna spotlight some of the people that have put their LinkedIn URLs in the chat. Um, so go ahead and put yours in the chat. Make sure that you include the HTTP colon slash slash there so that people can click on it easily and they don't have to copy and paste. Okay. So Evergreen Networking is here to teach you how to leverage LinkedIn to create more opportunities, more referrals, more valuable relationships on LinkedIn. I don't know if you know this, but 80% of business leads sourced from social media come from LinkedIn. And some people think, well, I don't really have time to learn how to use LinkedIn. It's a vast platform, <laughs> right? Think about that. It's such a big, massive, uh, like hairy, audacious platform. And there's so much to do there. And a lot of people, when it comes to using LinkedIn, are very overwhelmed. They're not really sure what to do. And so today, I'm going to walk you through a simple strategy because I believe the right strategy will save you a decade so that you can make the time you need to learn the strategy, invest in yourself, and hopefully grow your business. Now, LinkedIn is for networking. I don't know if you guys ever go to networking events or if you're familiar with networking events. Uh, but networking is a place where people don't sell. It's not about selling. It's about building relationships. Networking is about getting referrals. It's about making introductions. It's about sharing ideas. My biggest clients I get, I get from networking. It takes time to build relationships, just like in, in our personal life, right? If you're dating somebody, it takes time to figure out if they're the right person that you want to marry or get together with long term. Same thing in business. It takes time to know if you can trust somebody. You have different experiences with them. So using LinkedIn, you have the ability to stay top of mind with people, build real meaningful relationships, nurture those relationships, but it takes time. It takes time. and You have to be willing to invest the time to learn it because if you don't invest the time to learn it, you're not suddenly going to get LinkedIn. 
You're not suddenly just not not you're not suddenly going to understand it. It's something that you have to learn. So there's actually a ladder of success, and I'm going to walk you through the ladder of success because this is the journey that people often will go through when they have LinkedIn. On the bottom of the ladder is people that they have a LinkedIn profile. And by the way, most people in the world don't even have a LinkedIn profile. So if you already have a LinkedIn profile, you're you're in the top, I would say like 10% of humans in the world that are on LinkedIn because there's 875 million people on LinkedIn and there's 8 billion people in the world. So most human beings, 90% of people don't even have LinkedIn. They don't even know that LinkedIn exists. But the people that do know LinkedIn, a large percentage of them are absent. They have a profile, but they don't log in. So in the comments, you can write absent if you're absent. And I'm going to tell you the keys to success, and then I'm going to show you my three-step process. So if you have a LinkedIn profile, but you don't use it very, very much, just write absent. If you're a lurker, lurker means that you are using LinkedIn, you log in, but you're mostly watching. You're, part, you're not participating by posting, engaging. You're not really sending people lots of messages. You're mostly watching. So if you're a lurker, just write lurker. And it's not bad to be a lurker. It's not <laughs> bad to be absent. I want you to know that I'm not judging you. No matter where you are in your business, I am not judging you. No matter where you are on LinkedIn, there's no judgment. It's just self-identification because awareness is the first step to success. The first step to creating any change in your life is to just know what changes you need to make. So you have to know where on the ladder you are. Then the next step is networker. Networker is someone who uses LinkedIn, but they're dabbling. They get excited, they come in, they post something, that, and then they leave and they forget about it and they come back six months later and say like, oh my God, I have all these connections. Who are all these people? How do I use this? I'm not sure. But then you get excited, you do stuff, you message a few people, then you leave and you come back a year later. That's the networker. You know, like they're, they're networking, but they're not, really, they're not really influencing people. And then the top one is the influencer. That's the person that knows what they're doing, they have a strategy, and they're being successful with LinkedIn. So where are you on the ladder of success? Are you absent? Are you lurker? Are you networker? Are you influencer? Are you in between the two? If you're absent, your key to success is just know that LinkedIn is powerful. I mean, know that awareness, you don't understand the benefits of networking on LinkedIn. So you got to understand the benefits. You have to see how it works. And I'm going to show you some case studies today that hopefully will show you how valuable it is and you'll start investing more time learning how to do it. If you're a lurker, that means you don't have a strategy. You know, the reason why people are get stuck by fear, it's not because they're not courageous, it's because they don't actually have a plan. They don't know what to do. They don't have the plans, the tools, the strategies, the hacks. And so I'm going to share share with you my strategy. And and if you're a networker and you're stuck in that world, it's because you lack accountability. You're not with a group of other people that are doing this together. Learning is is a group activity. It's not something you do on your own. College, you have classes, right? Why do you think you have classes? It's because you learn better in a social environment than learning by yourself in the library. All the information is available on YouTube. <laughs> Actually, all the information is not available on YouTube. There's a lot of garbage on YouTube. But there is quite a bit of information. But you know, the best way for me is to like read really good books where people put their entire life into a book or go to a course or a group session or join a seminar, things like that. And what you're doing right now in a group, you see you guys are chatting in the, in the chat together. That's, a, that's like the, the herd mentality, right? You guys are getting together and you're learning together, which is awesome. And joining programs together with other people and finding them, that'll give you the accountability. And if you're an influencer, it's about giving back and making a difference for other people. And that's kind of like where I'm at, where I'm making a difference and doing these webinars. And, and you know, by me doing these webinars, and you know, you see there's over 100 people on this webinar right now. By me doing these webinars, I am contributing. I am making the world a better place and I'm helping other people be able to develop business. That's my thing. All right, let's move on to the next step where it's the three-step process. And this is a three-step process. And by the way, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the chat below. I'm happy to answer your questions in real time because I know how to multitask. I have multiple screens going on. Um, and if you guys want a little rap, I might even be able to put a beat on and <laughs> give you guys a little rap if you're interested. I don't know if you guys are into rap, but if you're into it, uh, let me know that you're into it, and I'll be happy to to put a beat and give you guys a little wrap. Um, okay, now, what I want to know from you guys is why are you on LinkedIn to begin with? What would you like to to create with LinkedIn? So I'm going to pull up my little screen over here, and I'm looking at some of the people that have um, that have shared their profiles with me over here. So I have Lou, um, I have James, I have... Um, somebody who put their company name here on their profile. By the way, it, this is a big mistake that a lot of people make. This is a personal profile. It's against LinkedIn's terms and conditions 
to put your company name as your first and last name. You want to be a human. You don't want to wear a logo over your head when you walk into a networking event. You want a first name, a last name on your badge. You want your company name on your badge, but you don't want to just, you know, use this as a company page. It's, it's a profile. Um, and then, so th that's a mistake that some people make. Um, this is a great profile. Look at this really, really nice background, really nice photo, her name, her maiden name here, her company. She's in Hollywood where my parents are. My parents are in Hollywood, Florida. I just spent 10 days with my kids in Hollywood. It was beautiful. So this is a great profile. There are, there is room for optimization here. And I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. Um, here's another great profile, great background. She has really good call to action. All her contact information's back here. That's really, really awesome. She has over 4,000 followers. Amazing. Um, here's a profile that needs some help. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, so if you take a look at the profile and you compare it like this profile and this profile, you'll notice this one has like, is missing a background banner and doesn't have like a, a, a proper headshot of a person and doesn't really have a lot of connections. And so learning, learning by looking at other successful profiles, you'll be able to improve your profile as well. Um, and you know, you can do background banners in Canva. There's, there's a tool called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. They have over 5,000 background banners that you can customize on there. Um, so I'm gonna be giving you, dropping you guys tips, but let me get into my strategy. Um, and these are the couple of people that have posted their LinkedIn profiles and I'm gonna, I'll get back to it um, and check you guys out in just a few minutes. But why are you on LinkedIn? I want you to think about why are you on LinkedIn? Arthur said, hey, Hollywood, my hometown, go South Broward Bulldogs. Okay, I don't, I don't know what the Bulldogs are, but I do. <laughs> uh, Joshua said, to connect with people who may be interested in my services. Nobody, nobody goes to a networking event to buy services. I want you to know that. People go to a networking event to meet people, build relationships and get referrals. So I want you to get in the mindset of like referrals, of making referrals and getting referrals as opposed to like being in there to get customers, right? You will get customers if you build relationships, but I want you to focus mostly on networking, not so much on prospecting. Okay, that's what I want you guys to get. Heidi said, I've been using LinkedIn for a long time. I wanna get better to connect with decision makers. And today I did make my first sale through LinkedIn connection. Yay, congratulations, oh. Heidi. That's amazing. Really, really cool. I'm reading the things. I wanna get more exposure. Stacy said, I wanna create more sales for my cookie company. Ooh, I like that. I love cookies. I love cookies, by the way. Cookies are amazing. Okay, so here are the three steps to be successful on LinkedIn. Number one is branding. Number two is building. And number three is booming. Number one is branding. Number two is building. Number three is booming. So branding is about creating a strategy. I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a second because I want to impress something upon you. The right strategy will save you a decade. If you have notes, take those notes down. The right strategy will save you a decade. Here's a quick story. My mother had a store in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Has anybody ever been to Delancey Street in the Lower <laughs> East Side on Orchard Street? Yeah, you have been, Diane? Yeah, cool. So back in the day, you know, immigrants, my mother's from Argentina, my father's from Brazil. They, she, she never really had an education. She didn't know, you know, she didn't have score. She didn't have any mentorship. So she came in and her brother said, why don't you open up a store in the Lower East Side? There's a lot of people there on Sundays and you can make a lot of money. So she said, okay, I'll open up a store. So she opened up a store and she started selling clothing, women's clothing. She didn't know anything. And I remember her saying, I'm gonna get lucky and I'm gonna become very, very wealthy. I'm gonna make a lot of money and I'm gonna support my six kids because my father didn't really wanna work. He wanted to learn, <laughs> very religious guy, he wanted to learn. My mother, on the other hand, she's an entrepreneur. She's like, I'm gonna make this happen. Not only am I gonna cook and clean and take care of the house, but I'm also gonna hustle and make some money. Very hungry woman. And she decided she can open up the business. She made my father work with her, which was wonderful. That really helped the relationship a lot. And uh, together they built a store, but they struggled. They struggled. And my mother's strategy, when I asked her, I was like, Ma, what was your strategy? <clears throat> she said, my, my strategy was luck, luck. I'm waiting for things to happen. I hope I'll make money. And she waited one year, two years, three years. She made a living. She made a living, barely made a living. Probably I would say that if she got a decent salary for herself and for my father and they got jobs somewhere else, we'd have more money. But we lived in a basement. It was a two bedroom basement. We didn't really have money, okay? Like we, we had enough money to have food on the table. We had enough money to have some clothing, but that's basically it. We didn't go on vacations. 
We didn't go to restaurants, none of that stuff. And I was okay. I was like, you know, I was happy. I had my siblings. I was really, really great. But watching my mother trying to get lucky instilled a fire in me to realize that this is not the path. This is not the way that it's going to go. And so eventually she went out of business. After 10 years of trying to get lucky, 9-11 happened, tourists stopped coming to the Lower East Side, and she went out of business. This is 10 years of me watching her as a teenager. So I have a little wound, and that's why I love helping entrepreneurs go from frustration to motivation. When I started my business, I said, I'm going to have a strategy because I read so many books and I took so many courses and I said, it's time for me to build my own business. 96% of businesses are doing under a million dollars a year in annual revenue. If your, if your profit is 5%, that means you can't even take 50K home. So my mother was trying to make money. She was doing 100, 200K on the best year. She maybe 250, 300. That's in top line. That's revenue. After she paid the one employee she had and the rent and everything else, she wasn't left with a lot. And then she had cash flow issues and she didn't know who to turn to and she didn't have all the resources that you guys have through SCORE. And eventually she went out of business. When I started my company, I decided I'm going to take a strat strategic approach. And with my strategic approach, I was able to build one of the fastest growing companies in America. We did a half a million, a million, two million, four million, and we kept doubling our business and growing. We served, serviced over 1,100 companies. And I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm telling you this because I want to instill upon you the importance of having a solid strategy. Whether you're using LinkedIn, whether you're doing email marketing, whether you're doing Facebook or anything else, you need to have a strategy. So my question to you is, do you have a strategy or you, do you need a strategy? If you have a strategy, just write, I have one. If you don't have a strategy, just write, I need a strategy, either in your notes or in the chat. And I'm going to show you how to create one right now. Really, really simple. Three steps. Step number one is you need a plan. Step number two is you need to target the right people. And step number three is you need to have the right promise, the right messaging, the right value proposition. This is the basics. This is the basics of people overcomplicate because the word strategy sounds fancy, right? It's like fancy schmancy. I'm not a fancy schmancy guy. I, I'm, I'm a very simple person. I like simple words. You know what a plan is. The plan is understanding what you want to do with your business, understanding what type of marketing you need, understanding what you're going to do on LinkedIn to get results. Like, for example, if you want to get clients, how many clients do you want? How many clients do you want? And by the way, we have an accelerator program starting tonight, and I posted about that um, at 4 p.m. We're starting it, and I posted about that on LinkedIn. So I'll share that LinkedIn post just to show you an example of a LinkedIn post. Um, just to show you an example, because some people are like, what does a LinkedIn post look like? So if you take a look at this LinkedIn post over here, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to click on the three dots. I'm going to click on uh, copy link to post, and I'm going to share this post with you guys right now in the chat. Um, I can't share it with you in the chat. I can only share it with hosts and panelists. It looks like uh, you got to pull down. Uh, I did the pull down, and it says hosts and panelists: Diane, Jen, or Sam. Why don't you post it to me and I'll forward it to everyone. Okay. Okay. So this is just a simple, a very, very simple, um, a very, it's so funny that I, everyone else can chat with everyone, but I can't chat with everyone. <laughs> well, it's trying to tell you something maybe. I don't oh know. my God. That's funny. Um, which is fine, which is fine. It's totally fine, but you can post that link. But, uh, bottom line is I posted, a. a thank you, Diane. I posted, I posted this on LinkedIn this morning, 22 minutes ago, right before this. I took a screenshot from our website. Um, I posted this. I'm going to give myself a little heart because I do love myself. I didn't always love myself, but I do love myself. <laughs> um, and I, that's how I'm able to love other people is because I'm able to love myself. And I wrote, today at 4 p.m., we have 50 amazing professionals coming together to learn how to use LinkedIn in our six-week accelerator program. And then I walk through what I'm going to be doing here. If you guys have an accelerator program or you have any training program that you do, or you have, you're selling cookies or whatever, you want to post about it on LinkedIn and talk to your target market. You want to tell people what you're doing. So my plan is that every single day, I want to be able to have at least five conversations. Now, when people like and comment on this, and I suggest that you try out liking this, for example, go ahead and like that post. If you click on it, give it a like, just to, just to get yourself into the spirit of liking things. I want you guys to learn how to like on LinkedIn. And most people that are lurkers or are absent never liked on anything. So I want to give you something to like on. Now, if you don't want to like on that, you could like on this little post over here. 
You could like on this little post over here. This is called a poll, a LinkedIn poll. 5,000 people saw this. I posted this video that I took of myself talking at a networking event, doing my elevator pitch and giving a little tip on my elevator pitch. 1,800 people saw this. So for me, I'm not trying to go viral. I'm not trying to get millions of people to see me. What I'm trying to do is I have a very specific strategy. I know what my plan is. My plan is five conversations every single day with who? With my target market, coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, people that I'm connected to on LinkedIn, people that are connected to my connections on LinkedIn. I have a very specific target market. And I also have a messaging. My value proposition is right on my profile. I, teach, I train teams on how to get an ROI from LinkedIn. You see that over here? It's right on my profile. So I want to know your value proposition. I want to know who your target is. I want to know who your centers of influences are. And by the way, the reason I posted this and I'm sharing this with you is not because I want people to join my accelerator program. It's because I want people in my network to know that I do these types of things. Do you get the difference? I'm not selling anything. I didn't tell everyone, please join my accelerator program. I didn't write that anywhere. I just let people know, hey, I have 50 amazing professionals joining. 50 people paid to join this program. It's going to be a six-week program, an hour per week for six weeks. And I'm not selling this at all. I'm just notifying my 38,000 people that I'm doing this today. Because people want to know what I'm up to. And when they know what I'm up to, they're more likely to refer business to me. And they're more likely to just be in touch with me and build a relationship. So over the next 24 hours, a thousand people will see that post. A thousand people. Could you imagine what power you have with LinkedIn where you organically, without paying anything, you can reach a thousand people? Now the problem is if you don't have the strategy that I outlined on the bottom under branding, the plan, the people, the promise, then you'll just be spinning your wheels because there's 875 million people on LinkedIn. If you're targeting the wrong people, even if you get conversations with people, it's, it's not gonna help you. You understand that? Like my mother had the wrong people walking into her store because she wasn't targeting the right people. She didn't go out to the people that were able to afford her couture clothing and market to them. She didn't send out emails. And I remember one time I was telling Ma, I was like, Ma, can I sell your stuff on eBay? <laughs> can, I, can I sell your stuff on eBay? She's like, no, you can't sell my stuff on eBay. I'm not using eBay to sell my stuff. What is even eBay? Like, what is a website? Like, no. We're not, we're waiting in the store for people to come. I'm like, ma, but nobody's coming. I'm literally sitting here, I'm bored. I'm playing with the cash register. She's like, stand outside and get people to come in. Stand outside and convince them to come in. I tried that on Sunday, it was fun, I had a good time. That's how I learned how to do cold calls, by stopping people on the street, approaching people and saying, hey, would you like to walk in and meet my mom? She's amazing. And they're like, oh, of course I'd like to meet your mom. Um, but you know, But learning how to be able to first have a plan, target the right people, and um, and building relationships by having the right messaging is the key. That's step number one. Stacy said, is the 4 p.m. meeting recorded? Um, if you want more information about it, check out the, the link on that post that you, that uh, Diane shared. On the, in the comments of the post, um, you can find out more information about it. And it says there's an FAQ that answers all those questions, Stacy. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the strategy. The next step is building assets. You have to tell stories. You, you remember the way I talked about my mother and her store and the Lower East Side and da, da, da. I told a story, right? All that was a story. I am constantly telling stories and I'm gonna tell quite a few stories in today's webinar, but I want you to understand that if you don't tell stories, people feel judged. You probably didn't feel judged when I told you the story of how my mother tried luck and instead I used a strategy and you maybe realized to yourself, oh my gosh, I actually need a strategy because I'm trying to get lucky. Hope is a great thing, it's just not a great strategy. So now you're realizing, oh my God, I need to figure out my plan. I need to figure out my target. I need to figure out my promise. And once I do that, then I need to figure out my stories because if you tell stories that are not related to your promise, your people and your plan, then you're just telling random stories. That doesn't help. I can tell ch children's stories. Once upon a time, there was a shark and he was in the water and he was looking for cheese, but there was no cheese in the water. He found a plastic bottle, whatever. I can tell stories that are irrelevant. That doesn't help. But when I tell relevant stories, people get inspired, they get motivated, and some people want to buy my products and services, and some people want to refer to my products and services. Stories sell. Features tell, stories sell. Write that down. Features tell, stories sell. And then you want to have an optimized presence. I showed you some of the profiles on LinkedIn um, that you guys shared with me, and thank you all for sharing your profile. I see Jim shared his profile. This is Jim's profile right here. I see Jim's an entrepreneur, an information architect, and a leader. 
but he has less than 500 connections on LinkedIn. That means he's not sending connection requests on a regular basis, but he is paying for LinkedIn, which is huge. Only 38% of people on LinkedIn pay for LinkedIn and 11% of people use Sales Navigator. By the way, do you guys use Sales Navigator? Just write SN as in Sales Navigator in the chat if you use Sales Navigator. I'm curious to know who uses, who's paying for Sales Navigator, which is the upgraded version of LinkedIn. The Sales Navigator is very powerful. He's a president of this company, right? So there's a lot of CEOs, presidents, there's a lot of really, really great people. Now, if you wanna know how to send how to send a connection request to somebody. You see, it doesn't say connect. It's a third degree connection. There's a secret more button here. Check this out. Do you guys see the more button? Mm -hmm. Under the more button, the connect button is hidden here. For a, If you're a third degree connection, they will hide the connect button because they don't want you randomly connecting with people that you have no mutual connections with. So I will click the connect button and it'll say, hang on a second. Do you really know James? And I'm gonna write other. And now I'm gonna hit connect. And then I'm gonna press add a note and I'm gonna say, James, thanks for coming to my webinar today. Are you open to connecting? Question mark, Joe Apfelbaum. And hopefully he'll press accept. You see that? I, just, I bet you he will. Yeah, I just sent James a connection request on LinkedIn. I showed you how simple it is to do that. So I'm teaching you how to do things right now that can change your life that can change your business, but you have to be the one to take action, okay? This is very, very powerful stuff. And by the way, I also have technologies and tools that I use where I can email him as well. So right now I have his email address, his phone number. I can capture his cell phone number if, you know, I don't know if, his, if this is the right number. Is this the right cell phone number for you, Jim or James? I see your name is Jim. Yes, so if I wanted to call him right now, I could literally copy this number and I could pull up my phone right now. And this is what I love doing with people. I literally just pull up the phone, push a button, and just start dialing. That's literally what I do. And I build a relationship with someone. I'm just going to call you just to see if it's the right number and just to say hello for a second. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you to just... Hey, hey, hey. Thank Hi, you. Joe. It was great. It's great to see you on the webinar. Thank you. I, you Thank you. I'm Thank still you. looking I'm for your bonus. I appreciate that. And, and we'll connect on LinkedIn and we'll talk more. I'm going to hang up now so I can focus on the webinar, but I just wanted to show how easy it is to call somebody. But do you guys see that? Do you guys see how I, how I operate? I operate in a way where I'm building a real relationship with one person at a time using technology, using strategy. Okay, I'm not making it up. I'm building relationships. And when I do that, people pay attention. Now you have to optimize your presence. You need the right automation tools. You need the right templates, the right scripts, the right dashboards. And if you do that, if you build your assets correctly, then you can start taking actions. There are certain actions that will give you exposure. There are certain actions that'll give you credibility. And there are certain actions that'll help you book meetings with other people. And I wanna teach you what those actions are, and I'll talk more about them. But first, let me show you something that some people might see a little over feel a little overwhelmed by and i don't i'm not showing you this to make you overwhelmed i'm showing you this that there's a vast amount of things to learn about on linkedin i in, i polled my 1000 clients that i've trained on how to use linkedin in the past 3 years and this is out of the top 300 people that responded to my survey these are the things they told me they learned over the course of them being in our program. This is very powerful. If you had this knowledge, you would be able to generate a lot more revenue. You don't need to learn all these things, but if you picked one, two, three things from here, you'd be able to start impacting your bottom line. Do you, this is how your brain works as a mind map. This is called a mind map. And so I just wanna show you like what's out there that you can possibly learn. There's a lot more that you can learn than just this, but this is what my students told me they learned by being in our program. But let's play bingo, cause what the heck? Let's play <laughs> bingo. You guys wanna play bingo? Let's play bingo, okay. So I know in Florida, they love playing bingo. My mother lives in Florida and a lot of people play bingo, right? Am I played right? Played it last night. Oh, you played it last night, look at you, okay. So I don't really know the rules of bingo, but I'm gonna make up these rules over here and I'm gonna just say, if the first square resonates with you, write one. If you don't have a LinkedIn strategy and you feel a little bit overwhelmed by the platform, just write one in the chat. 
Let's see how many ones we get. If you've tried LinkedIn, but you haven't had results, press two. If you know how to use LinkedIn, but you're not sure how to message strangers and to connect with strangers, you're not really sure what to say, press three. If you're not sure what to post on LinkedIn to get exposure, you're like, Ugh, what should I even post? I have like, it's called writer's block or something like that. I was talking to the CEO of an $8 million non-for-profit this morning. She's going to hire her us at my agency to redo her branding. She has a $50,000 budget, and we're going to redo her logo and her messaging and all that stuff with my agency. And I'm having a conversation. And she's like, I love that you're posting every day on LinkedIn. She's like, Joe, but I have no idea what to post. And I said, well, in our course, we teach people how to come up with their stories and you will have over a thousand different things to post if you decide to take our course. He's like, all right, I'm signing up to your accelerator program because I want to go deep with you for six hours over the next six weeks. I was like, okay, cool. You can sign up. Here's the link. I sent her the link. And she signed up to the accelerator program, which is great. But she now knows what to post on LinkedIn because she took the module on how to tell stories. If you not sure, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you do post content, but you're not getting engagement, press six. If you're not sure what automation tools to use, like the one that I use to find Jim's cell phone number, then press seven. If you need more conversations with people that are your ideal clients or your ideal target market or referral partners, press eight. And if you're willing to invest the time, effort, and energy that you need to be successful on LinkedIn, just press nine. Not everybody has the time. Somebody recently told me, Joe, I need another hour in my day. I said, you need another hour in your day for what? I said, you know what you have in common with Warren Buffett? He said, what? What do I have in common with Warren Buffett? You both have the same 24 hours in the day. And you both drink Coke. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, he started laughing. He's like, you know what? You're right. I don't need to change my time. I need to change my priorities. <clears throat> okay. So if you filled the whole bingo card, congratulations. You're in the right place. Congratulations. You're in the right place because I want you to have a clear strategy and not be overwhelmed. If you take my approach of plan, people, promise, then you'll have a strategy. You'll be able to write it down. If you've tried LinkedIn in the past and you haven't gotten results, is because you're not using the right technologies. You're not taking the right approach. It's not your fault. You need to either hire a coach or take a course or read a book or work with somebody that is already doing it or follow somebody that's already doing it correctly and learn from them, learn what they're doing. You know, there's a famous saying, success leaves clues. Find someone that has what you want and copy them. I always do R&D. R&D stands for rip off and duplicate. <laughs> okay, so let me give you some quick stats about LinkedIn. I wanna take questions, but I, I, I wanna uh, get some quick stats. LinkedIn now has 875 million people. When we made this slide a couple of weeks ago, that had 800 and you know whatever million people, and it's growing. It's growing at a rate of two new members every second. Oh. Every second, there's new people joining LinkedIn. LinkedIn CEO said he wants three billion people on LinkedIn in the next few years. In the United States alone, there's 196 million people in North in North America not just the United States, but North America, there's 196 million people on LinkedIn. And again, it's growing rapidly. In Japan, there's only 2 million people. And there's 125 million people in Japan that live there, and only 2 million of them are on LinkedIn, but still 2 million. I had a real estate agent that signed up to my course, and she's like, Joe, can you show me how many people are in Japan? I said, why do you want to meet people in Japan? She's like, I'm Japanese, and I know Japanese people want to buy real estate in America, specifically in New York. And I want to reach out to them on LinkedIn. So I showed her. I said, click, click, click. She learned. She saw. She's like, oh, my God, I have too many people to reach out to. So I helped her break her down to her target market of people in Japan that are in the position to buy real estate in New York. Think about the potential that this real estate agent has in New York City right now, reaching out to people in Japan that are willing to pay 20, 30, 40 percent more than the market value because the economy, the way the economy works and the way that she's able to reach out to millionaires on LinkedIn. I have a question for those of you listening. Is your business local, only in Florida? Is your business regional, like in the north, in like the eastern United States? Is it national, the entire United States, or is it global? My business used to be only local, only local. But now my business is global. 
I have a client that signed up a few weeks ago in Sweden. He saw my post on LinkedIn. He paid me $10,000 to join one of my programs. I had a person this week join our program from Israel. The guy came as a referral. He's a retired attorney. He signed up to our program. He said, Joe, in our first 30 minute session, you changed my life. You changed my life. This is a guy who's early retirement. He became a consultant, lives in Israel, very successful guy, but he has no idea how to use LinkedIn. And that's why he hired us. So I'm making a global impact for people. And I already made three introductions for him. And he's like, dude, these introductions are amazing. These are the people in my network. I'm connected to 11,000 CEOs on LinkedIn. You might say, Joe, like, how does that help you? It helps me because these are the CEOs that are in the position to buy my products and services. These are the CEOs that are in the position to refer business to me. You guys get this? Does this make sense? I see people local, Tampa, regional, uh, my ticket, BRA, I don't know what that means, Gustav, global, primary regional by choice. So your business could be global. I use LinkedIn to hire employees too. I have employees in seven different countries. I have employees in seven different countries, including Canada, <laughs> including Mexico, including the Philippines, India, London, many different places, cities and states all over the world. I have people in Spain that work for me. It's crazy. Think about that for a second. I have a global business now. Bill said, I have one in Beijing. I love that. By the way, I climbed the wall of China. So I am now a hero. I am a hero. They call you a hero. At the end, they make you buy a plaque. They don't make you, but they make you. I bought a plaque. I am a hero. I climbed the wall of China. Me and my kids. I went with my five kids to Beijing for Passover one year. It was very nice. We went to the zoo. We checked out the pandas over there. The pandas are not as clean as they look in the, in the movie. <laughs> they're pretty dirty. And I'm not saying they're mind. I'm saying like physically. They're mind maybe too. Okay. The United States has 31% of traffic coming to LinkedIn comes to the United States. So if you're a business in the United States, 31% of, of traffic coming to LinkedIn is in the United States. There's a lot of activity in the United States regarding LinkedIn, but it's a global platform. There's 57 million companies on LinkedIn. I started teaching LinkedIn. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second. I started teaching LinkedIn over a decade ago. There were only 65 million people there. It's still a lot of people, 65 million. But there were very few people on LinkedIn compared to how many people are on LinkedIn right now. The opportunity now is so much more exponential because, like I said earlier, Microsoft paid $26.2 billion for LinkedIn. And they transformed the platform or a place people put resumes to a content marketing platform. Microsoft owns LinkedIn. Microsoft is one of the biggest companies in the world. And they are investing heavily, heavily in making sure that LinkedIn is successful. And if you're on LinkedIn and you have the right strategy, you're going to be successful as well. I want you to know that. But you need the right strategy. You need the right assets. You need the right technologies. You need the right support. You need the right network. Your network is your net worth. So find someone that can support you. Find someone that can teach you. Find someone that you could follow, that you can see what they're doing and just copy them. It's okay. You don't have to come up with everything on your own. I used to think when I started my business that I had to come up with everything on my own. The best time to network is right now. Networking is something you have to do continuously forever. If you're wondering when to start networking, the answer is right now. And today, there's no better way to master networking than to master it on LinkedIn. Now, there are four major benefits of using LinkedIn, and I call this IRAP. Can anyone guess in the chat why I call it IRAP? Can anyone guess why I call it IRAP? Because it's information, research, access, and presence. And also, I like to rap. I do. I love rapping. But not everybody likes hearing my raps. Does anyone want me to just put on a little a little beat and do a little rap? I'm curious to know. Is anyone even here still? <laughs> Alicia said yes. James said yes. Lol. Word. Julian said word. Heck yes. All right. Let me. This is the beat that I like. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Can I get a boom in the zoom? Let me see if you can hear me. 
Uh, J-O-E. That's my name, cause I got the right strategy. My name is Joe, and I'm the LinkedIn pro. Everybody out there, they just want to grow. So they go to score to the webinar. Get you really far with the J-O-E. Let me show you how to be. Susan said, go Joe. Go Joe. In the club. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Amy said, sweet. Let me see how you do it to the beat. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go back into business mode. <laughs> I can do this for a really long time, but 30 seconds I think is enough. So information, the information you get on LinkedIn is like you can actually see, you can actually see who looked at your profile. You see their first name, their last name, their company name, where they work, where they worked, where they went to school, when they graduated, so you know their age, you know their gender, because now people are putting pronouns up. And I put a custom pronoun. Can anyone get what my custom pronoun is? I have a custom pronoun. <laughs> Can anyone guess my custom pronoun? Oh my gosh, let me show you mine. This is funny. I love it. I love having fun with it. Oh my gosh, because I, I like to hack things. So I put a custom pronoun. My custom pronoun is official LinkedIn trainer. And somebody said, Joe, is that against LinkedIn's terms and conditions to put a custom pronoun just to promote yourself, that you're a LinkedIn trainer? And I said, excuse me, the whole concept of pronouns is that you can get called whatever you want to get called. Is it a they, a them, a her, or a they? I want to be called a LinkedIn trainer. <sighs> you call me a LinkedIn trainer. It's amazing. So I want to know, what do you want to be called by your target market? In two words, what do you want your pronoun to be? What do you want to be called? What are the two words that represent your business? B2B marketing expert? Is it sales consultant? Is it coach? Whatever it is, you can go on LinkedIn and create a custom pronoun and it'll come up right next to your name. So that's my little hack for you. Money hunter, Susan said. I love that. Susan, you're the money hunter. That calls for another rap. Here we go, here we go, here we go. She's the money hunter. She knows how to find it. She knows what to do on LinkedIn. Update your pronoun, update your pronoun. Put your keyword in your pronoun. Okay, fine, that's enough. <laughs> Rosalind said hilarious. Okay, cool. Um, so you can, so let me show you how you can see who looked at your profile. So I have 3,806 people looking at my profile in the past, you know, a couple of weeks. So as you can see, this is who looked at my profile. David, uh, six minutes ago, looked at my profile. He's a managing director uh, for Shoshan International Consulting, operations, supply chain, project management. Uh, Beatriz looked at my profile. She's a founder of this mind, be, uh, be Mindful Consulting and Coaching. Uh -huh. Stacy, an attorney. These are not... These are not people that are just like randos. I see everything about them. I see who they are. So if I want to, for example, speak to this small business owner, entrepreneur, signing agent, so I'll click on this person's name and I see there she's in Miami, Florida, Giselle. Look at that. She has 265. She's like, oh, hi. She has, and by the way, I don't know if you speak Spanish, but I'm assuming you speak Spanish. Let me check what languages you speak. Let me see over here. Scroll down to languages. Hablas español, sí, perfecto. Entonces puedo cambiar todo este webinar y de repente hablar en español. Todos, todos aprenden, todos saben cómo hablar español aquí o solo tú y yo. Okay, I know it's not, it's not nice to speak Spanish. Not everyone speaks Spanish, but I'm curious to know. Any, anybody else speak Spanish here? What language do you speak other than English? Because Spanish is my first language, by the way. My mother's from Argentina, so. Oh, Creole, that's cool. French, Swedish, cool. Maybe we should do a Spanish webinar <laughs> at some point in the future. Uh, you, um, you're on, I, I put you on the schedule now. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be so much fun to do one completely in Spanish. Because I know a lot of people in Florida speak Spanish, a lot of people, and some people don't speak English. Uh, like my grandmother, mi abuelita no hablaba inglés. Okay. Oh, Eduardo say I'm Argentinian as well. Really, really cool. I love the way the languages are flowing. Arabic. My grandmother, my great grandparents are from Syria. So, um, so I know some Arabic as well. <laughs> Rasha's laughing. Did I say it right? Did I say it correctly? I said, <laughs> I said, I'm hungry. I am hungry. I'm hungry for success. You can see people's prospects identity. You can see your mutual connections on LinkedIn. Uh, Shante said, if you still have a full-time job, can you merge your LinkedIn profile so you don't lose your contacts? Yes, you can merge LinkedIn profiles together, definitely. Uh, Raja said, yes, I said it correctly. So there's a lot of information. There's a lot of research you can do on LinkedIn. I do surveys and signals. 
I, I'm able to do intelligent searches. I'm able to use actionable content on LinkedIn. Like for example, I'm able to see when people are looking for a web designer or looking for a marketing consultant because they're posting about it and I know how to search through content. I'm able to access anyone. You saw the way I pulled up a cell phone and an email right there. I'm able to DM anybody. I'm able to in-mail somebody that I'm not connected to on LinkedIn. I can connect with anybody. It's very, very powerful. Um, you, you get SEO from LinkedIn. If I Google your name, your LinkedIn profile usually comes up. I can get recommendations. Does anybody know how many recommendations I have on LinkedIn? Check this out. I have hundreds of clients that have left me positive reviews on my profile. Look at this. Uh, how many? I don't know. 400. Over 400 recommendations. And by the way, Savvy BG helps realtors by doing a done-for-you YouTube strategy. So he'll go to their YouTube channel and populate it with tons of custom videos for them. When he joined us, he was struggling to get leads. And as a result of taking the Evergreen Networking System, within eight weeks, he generated $40,000 in new revenue to his business. His mind was completely blown. Completely blown. He's originally from India. He has a very thick accent. He lives in Toronto. And he's like, dude, you changed my life. I had no idea that there were realtors that use LinkedIn to this degree. I said, what are you talking about? Realtors have to use LinkedIn. And it's like, dude, this is a gold mine. I love this. And he left me a beautiful recommendation on LinkedIn. And I can keep going on and on about all the people that are getting results from LinkedIn. We have an intimacy coach, Sarah, who helps CEOs uh, with their private life, with their intimacy, because CEOs are so focused on the boardroom, they're not really so successful often in the bedroom. So she helps them out. She was struggling to find qualified leads on Facebook and Instagram. All the people she spoke to there were broke. I turned her on to LinkedIn. She generated $200,000 in revenue in the first 90 days. Her name is Sarah Rose. She's on my landing page. You can call her and speak to her and ask her, especially if you need some intimacy coaching. She's amazing. Barry hired me to train his team. In the first eight weeks, they generated $850,000 in revenue. The reason I'm showing you these testimonials is not to tell you that I'm good. It's to tell you that LinkedIn works. This is what I want to impress upon you. LinkedIn is a powerful platform, but you have to learn how to use it. You have to learn how to use it. So this is the way that it works for me. There's a lot, of, a lot of different ways to make it work. There's no wrong way to market yourself. There's no wrong way to network. There's only doing it in an effective way and an ineffective way. Have you guys read the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? I'm curious to know. Have you guys read that book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? He talks about sharpening the saw. So the concept of sharpening the saw is... The concept of sharpening the saw is, let's say you have a tree that you need to cut down, and hopefully you're not cutting trees down, hopefully you're planting trees. But if you had to cut a tree down, let's say the tree was dying or you needed wood to heat your family or whatever it is, you're cutting the tree down, you can spend eight hours cutting the tree, right? You can spend eight hours, or you can spend 15 minutes sharpening the saw and cut the tree down in two hours. That's what using strategy is all about. Sharpening the saw, learning, growing. Joe Appletree, <laughs> Joshua said Joe Appletree. My last name is Apfelbaum, and Apfel means apple in German. I don't speak German, but I can speak with a German accent, which by the way is not PC anymore, unless you're doing stand-up comedy. But with a Russian accent, they say it is PC now. Like, I don't know why, but anyway, we'll talk more about that when you come to my stand-up comedy routine. Okay, so we have um, an evergreen networking system. I'm not sure if anybody's interested in our system, but if you're interested in our system, I can walk you through it. Just write interested in the chat and I'll talk you through what our system looks like. And if not, I'm happy to just answer questions about our strategy. If we get three or four people or five or 10 people that are interested to learn more, I can tell you more about our system. But otherwise, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm gonna scroll up. So far, Samir is interested, James is interested. Okay, so Josh wants to know the spelling of evergreen. The, the name of the company used to be called Social Sell-In, but LinkedIn sued us. They sent us a cease and desist letter because sell-in sounded too much like LinkedIn, and we were teaching LinkedIn. I didn't think, I didn't agree, but I'm not going to fight Microsoft. You know, they have more money than me, just a little bit more. <laughs> they have a little bit more. They're, they have a whole team of legal in-house counsel that were prepared to just smash the crap out of us. So we said, you know what? We raised the white flag. We said, we're not doing this. We're not fighting with you. We're going to change it to Evergreen Networking. But evergreen.com was not available. So I'm running in the park one morning <laughs> and thinking to myself, it's evergreen. It needs to be evergreen. Everything I do is evergreen. Everything I do, wants, I want it to last forever. I want it to be fresh. So I said, why not 
use a funky spelling. So I added a Y in the middle and it was available. Evergreen with a Y. And people say, but why the Y? I said, why not? Why not with a Y? It sounds cool. Okay, that's the reason. <coughs> and it's good branding too, if you can figure out how to spell it. <laughs> but everybody does funky spellings these days. I'm gonna drink some water. Okay, so a bunch of you said you're interested. Let me count how many people. Somebody also has, people have been asking about, uh, should you accept all of the requests that you get for connections? Ooh, that's such a, that, by the way, that is the most popular question I get. The most popular question I get on LinkedIn. So let me click on my network just to show you my connection request. I have 1,615 people waiting to connect with me. <laughs> I do not accept everybody's connection request, but I will accept yours if you tell me you came to the SCORE webinar. So for example, David said, I enjoyed your webinar today. Would you like to connect? I'm going to press accept because I know that he came to the webinar. Susan said, I came to the webinar, so I'm going to press accept. But if you're like a, if you're a cyber criminal, I'm not going to accept you. There's a lot of cyber criminals in the world that want to steal money from people. So I'll have to like do a little bit of research to make sure the person's not a cyber criminal. But if you're on this webinar, I'm assuming that you're not a cyber criminal, that you're a real human. So I'm going to just accept, accept, accept a bunch of people that are here that are sending me connection requests. So I have a networking philosophy. My philosophy is I either know who you are or I either want to get to know you because I see you're a real person or you're a fan of my content. That is my criteria. I want you to create your own criteria. And in our course, we teach people how to create their own criteria for connecting with people. Um, but I recommend creating your own criteria. I'm not sure if these people came to the webinar or not, but I'm gonna have to look through their profile. Like for example, this person follows me and has invited me to connect. Um, I see he's in Ontario, so he's not in the US, which is fine. He's paying for LinkedIn, he has a marketing company. I have never seen him like or comment on any of my stuff, and I'm not sure if he's on this webinar right now. Um, let me see, let me scroll down to the bottom. Uh, Stacy said, please accept mine too. Okay, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm going to click on my network again. For some reason, it's uh, my LinkedIn is breaking now. Okay, something I got an error 429. I don't know what that means. Contact the site owner. Okay, well, I think Link LinkedIn sometimes has a heart attack. So I'll have to use this. I'll have to like close it and see what's going on over here. Let me see. Let me refresh LinkedIn and see if I get this error here. Okay, let me click on my network again and see. Sometimes you get errors on LinkedIn. Oh, there you go. I'm enjoying your webinar. Would you like to connect? Okay, I'm going to go through all my connection requests and see who, like I'm going to accept everyone's connection request that um, that has sent me a connection request. Um, I'll get to it. I'll get to so a regional sales manager for a company. So I like reviewing people's profiles and see who they are. So if somebody's like a regional sales manager and they're real, that means they have skills, they have recommendations. You can see she's a real person. This is perfect. Why? Because she could, uh, Rhonda can potentially hire me to train her team. It could be $100,000 in revenue, or she could hire me to market for her. It could be $200,000 in revenue. You see that? So I press accept. So that could be really, really good potential. And then once I accept, what I'll usually do is use one of my templates. I have lots of different templates over here. Um, and so thanks for connecting. Um, thank you so much for connecting with me on LinkedIn, blah, 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 right? So I have a whole little template. I'm going to press send. So I don't have to think about what to do. Yeah. You get that? I, I use templates and I use technologies that help me build those templates. Okay. So a lot of you said you're interested. Uh, Sam said, 11 said interested. So let me, let me just walk you through our program. So you know what we offer. And then, and if you want to apply to our program, just hit up Sam, Samantha's right here. And she'll interview you to talk to you about your, to see if we can actually help you. We don't take on clients who can't help. And that's why I have so many testimonials because <laughs> we only literally take on people that we can help. So it was like you're selling like, you know, if you're like a cleaners that people pay you fifty dollars, we're not gonna be able to help you. But if your clients are worth a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, a hundred thousand, a million dollars, we can definitely help you. Okay. So course, live coaching, continuing education and community. The course is modules. So we have nine modules. We walk you through how to come up with your plan, how to target the right people, how to develop your promise, how to tell stories, like we teach you how to be able to come up with content. We give you a 20 point checklist on how to optimize your profile. We teach you these tools that I've been showing you and how they work and which ones you need and which ones are against LinkedIn's terms and conditions that you shouldn't be using. And then we teach you how to post, how to engage and how to message. Posting will give you exposure, messaging, uh, engagement will give you credibility and then messaging on LinkedIn using the DMs. By the way, 
DMs on LinkedIn is not a bad thing. On Instagram, it means you're trying to date somebody. It's called sliding in the DM. Have you ever heard that? He slid into my DM. She slid into my DM. That's Instagram. So be careful when you're sliding into people's DMs on Instagram because they might think that you want to date them. But on LinkedIn, it's not. there's no dating going on on LinkedIn. And please, people, no dating on LinkedIn. Dating, link, <laughs> right? No dating on LinkedIn. This is a professional social network. I'm not married, and people hit me up sometimes, and I say, could you move to Instagram, please? If we're going to be doing this, let's do this on Instagram. <laughs> right? But on LinkedIn, let's keep it professional. Let's keep it like, you know, let's keep it above board. There's no in the office. No, yes. no yes. fool around in the office. Otherwise, they'll have to call HR. Um, okay, so the second component is live coaching. Live coaching. Many companies buy courses, but they don't get support they need. So we offer coaching twice a month in a group setting. We have over a thousand people. Not all of them join. We have a few dozen people that join at once and we give you unlimited access to coaching and group coaching sessions and you can email us and all that. We also have continuing education sessions. We have over a hundred hours of sessions that we've pre-recorded, but we also do them live. Every month you can join a workshop if you're part of the program. And we teach you things like LinkedIn Live, like LinkedIn Newsletter, like LinkedIn DM. Like there's a lot of different things that we can teach you how to use. But again, one hour at a time, one month at a time, and we help you how to, uh, we teach you how to use these tools. And then we have a community. We have networking events that happen on a regular basis. We connect people with each other, and we encourage you to join our accountability groups every week. Um, and this is our system. And after two weeks in our evergreen networking system, a business professional set more than 30 meetings for just one of the strategies that we taught him. Now, what is a meeting worth to you? I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a second because I want to, I want to really impress upon you. And I want to leave you with this. If you understand the value of each meeting, then you'll understand what you could afford to invest in your marketing, with your time, with your effort and energy. So I just had a conversation with a CMO of a company. They want to get to 500 million in revenue. She told me she could afford to pay $2,000 for every meeting she gets. $2,000 for a meeting with a qualified CEO of a company that does over 10 million in revenue. Why? Because one out of every three meetings she gets, the CEO signs up to a $100,000 a year coaching package with that company, okay? There's a lot of companies like that, but she knows her number. She used to own an agency, I own an agency, and we were able to speak. I want you to put a value to every meeting you get. And if you got 30 meetings, you got 30 times that value. So she's willing to pay me $60,000 to get her 30 meetings with these CEOs because I have the list of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. And by the way, that list is no longer available for sale. That list used to cost $15,000. They don't sell it anymore and we give it to our students as a gift. It's a $15,000 value, just a list alone. So what I want you to know is that if you have a value to each client, then you can understand what your ROI is. Then you'll understand how much time you should spend on LinkedIn because you have an hourly rate. Everybody has an hourly rate. Your time has value. So what is your client worth to you? I'm curious to know in the chat, what is your client worth to you? In the chat, go ahead, tell me what is the value of your client? Is it worth a thousand, 10,000, a hundred thousand? A Steve Lang said $4,500 per client. I love that. So 4,500 per client, how many conversations do you need to have in order to get to a client and how much could you pay for each conversation in terms of your time, effort, energy, and education? Residual income? But fifty to one hundred twenty thousand dollars per project. Kelly says five thousand to two hundred thousand. So think about think about putting a value to each meeting, and hopefully you guys got value from this. Diane, were there any other questions that I missed that I can answer before we wrap up? No, that was the uh, one that I thought uh, came up over and over again, and I think it's such a popular question, as you said. Did I answer it correctly? You did. You did it. Well, that and a million other questions you answered correctly. I'm blown away by this, this webinar. This, for my SCORE clients, is going to be required watching. You can count on that. I love that. If you guys want to apply to our program, like I said, we don't accept everybody, but just apply so that you can speak to Sam and she'll give you free advice. Worst case scenario, if you don't qualify. Just go to learnbusinessnetworking.com, press the apply button and apply. It doesn't cost anything to apply. It asks you certain questions that will also make you think um, about your business in different ways. So this is my gift to you is, you know, go ahead, apply, and Sam will hop on the phone with you and give you some advice. Um, and if you feel stuck when it comes to using LinkedIn, know that there are plenty of people that can help you. There are over a thousand LinkedIn coaches on LinkedIn. 
So if you don't want to take our program, find somebody that you want to that you, that resonates with your message. Maybe you don't like someone who raps. I rap. I happen to rap. If you're allergic <laughs> to rap, that's okay. But you need education. You know, the right education, the right skills will help you pay the bills. And if you pay the bills, maybe you can buy yourself a new set of grills. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too much, too much. Love your time. Skills pay the bills so you can buy grills. This is no thrills. All right. Just a couple of uh, last minute things that I want to talk to you about. If you think that uh, one of your one of your score mentors can help you uh, work through your uh, LinkedIn or get started with it, contact minnesota.score.org and sign up uh, to get a mentor. If you have expertise in areas and you'd like to share your expertise as Joe is doing, think about volunteering as a mentor. We'd love to have you. You don't have to actually be a mentor if you volunteer. We have subject matter experts, we have volunteers, and we have mentors. So uh, think about that. Uh, check out our other uh, workshops, podcasts, and templates. And lastly, you'll be getting a survey. We would love to hear your feedback. I can only imagine what kind of feedback Joe is going to get on this, because this has been one of the most amazing hours of my life. And I hope that you feel the same. I have learned so much about LinkedIn. I'm always telling people to use it, but now I can tell them better how to use it and how to get better results. So this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for having me so much. And I want to encourage everyone that's still here to post about this on LinkedIn and tag yes. me and Diane in it. Tag me and Diane in the post and we'll leave comments there. So maybe write a post, maybe take a moment and just write a post about the benefits that you got from just showing up today with some of your notes. And this way your network will see it as well and you'll get a little more exposure. And if you mention me and Diane, we'll like and comment on it as well. You betcha, I'll be looking for that, absolutely. All right, well, thank you all for coming and particularly thank you, Joe. Your expertise, enthusiasm, knowledge are boundless and we appreciate your sharing with us. But count on me contacting you about the Spanish version. I would love that. I would love to speak about the Spanish version. And if you guys if you guys have additional questions, you could always email my team, info at evergreen.com, and we're happy to help. And also as a gift, we do have a spreadsheet of all the hashtags on LinkedIn that are the most popular hashtags because there are hashtags that are not popular, that have no followers. And if you add those hashtags to your, uh, to your post, it's not going to get exposure. So use max three to five hashtags and go to hashtag spreadsheet.com. That's H-A-S-H-T-A-G, hashtag, spreadsheet, spelled like a spreadsheet, dot com. And you can get that spreadsheet that we created there for you guys, which has a list of the top 100 hashtags on LinkedIn with how many followers they have, with uh, their categories so you can sort and filter and use three to five hashtags max on every post and do not include links in your posts. So that's my final tip. Thank you very much for being here. Connect with me on LinkedIn, like and comment on my content so that I can see you and I can hopefully connect with you when I'm in Florida because I will be there. <laughs> we'll be on the lookout for you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Thanks. thank you all for coming and thank you again, Joe. Bye-bye for all, for now. Bye.